Hey YouTube, this is Ashwin and welcome to the Sorting Hat Ceremony which is located in the Hogwarts. This ceremony gives you four houses to choose from which are Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. If you do not belong to the house you choose, better luck next time. So let's jump right into it. First, you need to press run to start the game. It is the most important step because nothing can function without it. Now let's look at the code. First, I set the background to desert as it looks cool and it matches the color brown. It also matches the first sprite of the code, which is a picture of the Hogwarts school and in the middle of it, it says sorting hat ceremony. Before I made this sprite, I placed a block called play sound. This block basically plays any sound you want and I have made it to play a sound called clear evidence loop which is approximately 45 seconds long and it sounds like the original game. Here is a comparison of the original game with my game. Have you noticed there is a start button inside the castle? Well, if you did, nice job. If you didn't, it doesn't really matter because I am telling you about it. This start button has a function which can start the game. It also has other functions which I will tell you about later. Now you can see that I have set the size of this Hogwarts sprite to 360 as I want it to be big so people can see it properly. You might be wondering, but Ashwin, what is that title screen block you have put in the workspace? Well, let me tell you all about it. This block basically shows a title screen, a title or a subtitle. I have not put anything in the title screen as it is way too big and I have not put anything in the subtitle screen because it is way too small for a person to see. But you can see I have put a text block in the title which says, Hi, please click the option start to start the game. This text is basically for a person to read so that they can understand how to play the game. They are normally in called instructions, but you can call it whatever you want. Now what you have all been waiting for, the function of the start button. First, the start button hides the title screen and shows another title screen which says to follow the instructions on the screen. Next, I remove the Hogwarts and the start sprite and set the background color to peach as I want it to look like the original game but some parts should be unique. Now I make a Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff sprite and I make them all size 125 and I make them spin right. I also make a sprite which asks you to choose the house you want and I set its size to 150 and I make it spin right. Now we come to the blocks when Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff sprite clicked. First, I remove the Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff sprite and I make them at a different location. I did the same things I did with them earlier and hit the title screen and played a sound called Ari Wush. This sound is basically a whoosh sound but my favorite. I make a variable and name it player's choice and I set it to 1 and remove the sprite which asks you to choose the house you want as you don't need those instructions anymore. I make a hat sprite and a click me sprite and I set the hat sprite to 200. I do the same things with Slytherin, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff sprite but 
the only difference is that I set the player's choice to a number higher than the player's choice before the one I set it to. If you didn't understand the player's choice, I'm assuming you didn't. Let me quickly explain it to you. We all know the houses and we also know the order of it. If you don't know the order of the houses, basically Gryffindor is 1, Slytherin is 2, Ravenclaw is 3 and Hufflepuff is 4. So basically, if you are the one coding this game, you should set the house pride to the order of it. The player's choice also has a function later in this code. Now we come to the block when click me click. As you saw, I made a sprite which asks you to click the hat sprite. You might have wondered about what the click me sprite would be used for. If you did, this is the use of the click me sprite. As I did earlier, I played a sound called Ari Wush. I also played it here. If you couldn't guess, my goal with the Ari Wush was sound was to play it whenever a person clicked a sprite in the game. Now I make the hat sprite spin right and I also change the click me sprite to a stop sprite. Every sprite in this game has a function when you click on it. So let's learn the function of the stop sprite. As usual, I play the Ari Wish sound and then I make a function which is called all sprites disappear. This function basically removes all of the sprite. Here is what it does. It removes the Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, the hat sprite and the stop sprite. Now I make a variable called computer's choice and I set it to the random integer from 1 to 4. It basically gives a random number but in this case between 1 to 4. I also make a variable called size and set it to 275. It basically sets the size of a sprite I set it to. If you didn't understand, you will later. After I placed those blocks into the workspace, I placed a block called a conditional block. Basically, it will do something if something is present or done. Do you remember that we have set the variable called computer choice to a random integer from 1 to 4? If you do, nice job. If you didn't, it doesn't matter. So, Basically, this conditional block does certain tasks after the computer has chosen its number. If you didn't understand, take an example of a game we play in person. Basically, there are a bunch of cards in a bowl. In those cards, there will be certain tasks you need to do. If you have chosen a card, you are supposed to do something. This game is similar to the conditional block we are using. In this case, the bunch of cards are the uh, houses of the Hogwarts and the computer is the person choosing it. You are randomly choosing a card and you don't know what it is. In this case, the computer choosing a sprite is completely random and it is called random integer. Now, we come to the tasks that the computer should do after it has chosen its number. If the computer's choice is 1, it will make a Gryffindor sprite and set it to the variable called size, which is 275. I also make the sprite patrol around the screen. This happens for Slytherin, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff sprites too. As I told you, the only difference is it only happens when the computer's choice is a specific number in the random integer. After this conditional block, I have made another conditional block which says if computer choice is equal to the player's choice, do something. So, the player's choice block is important in this part of the code. 
basically there are four options so i set the computer choice to a randomized option and i stored the player's choice with a variable so for example if i chose gryffindor and the computer also chose gryffindor it will say congrats you are in your specific house you wanted to be and then i play a victory sound and i made the congrats bright petrol around the screen now if the computer's choice is different from the player's choice it will display the sprite sorry you are not in your specific house you wanted to be and i make the sprite petrol around and i also make it play a sad sound so that was it for the code here is the entire game for you was it make sure you leave a like subscribe and share it to other people i hope you have a nice day and goodbye